From the high peaks of Colombia to the central heartland of Chile, one empire amid the vastness of pre-Columbian America stretched its influence further and deeper than any of its contemporaries. This was Tawantinsuyu, or as we usually know it now, the Inca Empire, a majestic country that made an everlasting impression on history despite its comparatively brief life of around a century. Its complicated heritage continues to captivate us to this day. Inca stems from the Quechua language, initially signifying a leader or sovereign. In the Inca monarchy, this phrase was respectfully used to refer to their monarchs. Today, however, Inca has taken on a larger connotation, signifying the complete civilization. Most of our grasp of Inca history comes from Spanish historians, who meticulously chronicled the oral traditions and practices handed down through generations, therefore preserving their important legacy during and after the Spanish conquest. In the colorful weaving of Inca mythology, the narrative opens with Manco Capac, the first Inca ruler, and his sister spouse, Mama Oclo, the divine daughter of the sun god Inti. The tale proceeds with Inti, concerned by the crude actions of humans, sending his descendants to restore civilization and order to the planet. Emerging from the crystal blue waters of Lake Titicaca, the world's highest navigable lake spanning present-day Peru and Bolivia, Manco Capac and Mama Oclo proceeded on their expedition. Armed with a golden staff, they were commanded to construct a vast civilization at a spot where the staff could go through the earth with a single determined blow. This expedition finished at what we now know as Cusco, tucked in the heart of contemporary Peru. The two attempted the challenging task of civilizing the populace. Manco taught men agricultural methods, tool making, construction practices, and government ideas. Concurrently, Mama Oclo instructed women in weaving, sewing, cooking, and other household skills. Their teachings signaled the end of nomadic existence, ushering in the age of a settled agricultural culture. Thus started the narrative of the Inca civilization, whose effect is still visible today. The turning point for the Inca civilization happened under the administration of the ninth Sapa Inca, Pachacuti. Known in Quechua as Earthshaker, Pachacuti rose to the throne in 1438 AD. His rule saw the Inca nation grow into a powerful force in South America, its influence leaving a vast shadow. This era represents a time of vigorous growth, accomplished via both military force and strategic relationships. Before Pachacuti, the Incas were only a tiny tribe anchored in Cusco. Born approximately 1411, Pachacuti was the son of the 8th Sapa Inca Viracocha. According to Inca tradition, Pachacuti gained the throne amid a moment of turbulence when the formidable Chanca tribe attacked Cusco. As Viracocha and his oldest son fled, Pachacuti kept his ground, assembling defenders and finally repelling the invaders. His heroism and leadership gained him the allegiance of his people and the throne of the Sapa Inca. Pachacuti's rule from 1438 to 1471 saw the kingdom of Cusco blossom into the strong Inca Empire. He ushered in wide-ranging administrative and military reforms, transforming the kingdom into a well-organized empire. His administration witnessed a tremendous geographical expansion accomplished via both conquest and peaceful absorption, spanning the Inca dominion from southern Ecuador to central Chile. Pachacuti is credited with the creation of several Inca architectural masterpieces, including the sky-kissing Machu Picchu, the powerful fortress of Sacsayhuaman, and the sun-drenched Coricancha in Cusco. He was the inspiration behind Cusco's metamorphosis into an imperial metropolis, befitting its rank as the capital. Additionally, Pachacuti founded the Yachewasi schools for nobility, encouraging state-sponsored education for the future leaders of the empire. These institutions conveyed knowledge of religion, history, military strategy, public administration, and the Quechuan language, arming future leaders with the wisdom of their forefathers. Pachacuti's death in 1471 saw the leadership mantle transfer to his son, Tupac Inca Yupanqui, 
and then to Tupac's son, Huayna Capac. Huayna Capac furthered the expansionist agenda of his predecessors, expanding Inca sovereignty into what is now Ecuador and potentially reaching southern Colombia. However, his leadership also heralded the beginning of the difficulty of ruling a huge empire with various climates, geographies, and cultural groupings. Tupac Inca Yupanqui and Huayna Capac, the late 15th and early 16th century monarchs of the Inca Empire, faced a plethora of severe problems. The Inca Empire spanned enormous regions throughout present-day Peru, Ecuador, Bolivia, Chile, Argentina, and Colombia. The administration of such a huge territory was a tremendous logistical challenge, further exacerbated by the era's technical limits. Despite the elaborate road system and runners the Inca created, coordinating supplies and information across such a huge territory remained a formidable undertaking. The empire was a cultural mosaic home to many ethnic, linguistic, and cultural groups. This variety might lead to misunderstandings, disputes, and governance issues. To combat this, the Incas developed a strategy of forced relocation, transferring whole people to encourage cultural integration. As the Inca Empire developed, they reigned over various people who were frequently reluctant subjects. These communities would occasionally oppose or revolt against Inca control. Maintaining authority and allegiance was a perennial battle for Inca kings frequently demanding military interventions or strategic marriages. Both Tupac Inca Yupanqui and Huayna Capac had to struggle with the challenges of succession. In the Inca system, every son of the Sapa Inca was a prospective contender to the throne, providing perfect circumstances for disagreements and civil warfare. The most destructive of them was the conflict of succession between Huayna Capac's sons, Atahualpa and Huascar. This fierce struggle substantially undermined the empire, laying the stage for the approaching Spanish invasion. Towards the conclusion of Huayna Capac's reign, a wave of sickness, presumably smallpox, swept over the Inca Empire. This alien sickness, introduced by Europeans, had terrible repercussions on the empire long before the Incas had actual contact with the Spanish. Among its victims were Huayna Capac himself and his chosen successor, Ninan Cuyuchi, throwing the empire into a succession crisis. Huayna Capac's death precipitated a fierce power struggle between his sons, Huascar and Atahualpa. At the same time, Huascar reigned in Cusco with the assistance of the nobles, while Atahualpa was a famous military commander. The advent of Francisco Pizarro and his Spanish conquistadors represented a critical turning point in the history of the Inca Empire. Arriving in 1532, just as the civil war between Atahualpa and Huascar was drawing to a conclusion, the Spanish profited from the empire's weakened status. The Spaniards were significantly fewer in number, but had modern weapons and horse-mounted combat that were foreign to the Incas. Moreover, their entrance coincided with the development of illnesses like smallpox, imported by Europeans, which had already started decimating the local population. In a dramatic episode at Cajamarca, Pizarro abducted Atahualpa, who was ultimately murdered despite his people completing an exorbitant ransom. The Inca Empire found itself leaderless and bewildered, accelerating its fast demise under the Spanish invasion. Yet, even under Spanish administration, the spirit of Inca resistance survived, signifying the persistence and tenacious spirit of this extraordinary culture. The death of Atahualpa, the last Sapa Inca to command an undivided kingdom, produced a power vacuum that expedited the fall of the Inca kingdom. Despite Spanish dominance, certain Inca nobility began resistance activities, most notably Manco Inca Yupanqui and subsequently Tupac Amaru. However, these resistances, concentrated around the jungle city of Vilcabamba, faced enormous odds against the militarily superior Spanish soldiers. The diverse rebels couldn't combine successfully against the common adversary, owing to chronic factionalism and a lack of resources. Meanwhile, the larger Inca population was coping with new Spanish regulations, forced labor, and alien illnesses, resulting in a severe reduction in population. The ultimate blow occurred in 1572, 
when Spanish soldiers arrested and murdered Tupac Amaru, the last Inca commander of the resistance, thereby dimming the once dazzling torch of the Inca Empire. Despite its terrible conclusion, the civilization's brilliant architecture, efficient government, and rich culture continue to captivate and inspire us today. So why does our interest in the Incas endure? One significant argument is the cryptic character of their society. The lack of a written language in their culture means that much about their civilization is still buried in mystery. Each archaeological find has the potential to expose another component of the Inca puzzle, putting the globe on tenterhooks. Their excellent grasp of an assortment of subjects, including construction, agriculture, and astronomy, is another cause of our continuous adoration. The Incas completed these accomplishments without many of the tools and resources generally accessible to other civilizations, which is nothing short of awe-inspiring. Of course, the sheer grandeur of the Inca Empire, the greatest in pre-Columbian America, guarantees its standing as an important chapter in global history. Studying the Incas gives unique insights into statecraft, culture, and human perseverance in the face of harsh circumstances. So when we appreciate the stone walls of Machu Picchu or listen to the murmurings of Quechua, let us remember the great empire that once was and the legacy it has left for us to treasure and learn from. That's all for this video. We'll be back soon with another informative video. Don't forget to like and share this video. Until next time!